All right, with New Year's not far away, I figured it was time to look at creating a countdown, this time in Wire. So using Wire to generate a text countdown as a New Year's Eve countdown timer. Starting in Wire here, I've got a blank project. I first want to choose what sort of project it is. So I want this to be a source. So under the patch category here, just choose source. I'm just going to call this uh, NYE countdown. And I can start dragging some patches. So the first thing we need is we're going to need to texture out node. I have to make sure that we're outputting something. Okay, first of all, I need to know what time it is. So I'm going to add a time, system time. And I'm just going to build a quick clock up in the corner here, just to see what's going on. So I'm going to render the text. So I need a text renderer. Um, Video mixer just so I'm bringing in a couple of mixes into this texture output. So I'm going to render this to the second layer. And I, can only, I need to combine these. So they're separated. My hours, minutes, and seconds are all separated. So I want to line up as one long string. And there's a node for that uh, under collection called concatenate. And basically, that's just left and right, adding them together, and you put a separator in there. So you could add two words. Um, or actually, just use two of these and separate it with a semicolon to create a very quick clock. So I'm putting my hours in and my minutes, separated by that semicolon, and bringing both of those into the left side and adding my seconds as well. And so now I can see that coming out there. So right now, I'm working at midnight, uh, and so we're at zero. And if I'd started this video right on midnight, it would have been a lot easier to calculate things. Um, so I'm just going to move all of this. I'll stack it all up so it's just nice and out of the way. And I'm going to add a uh, transform node, video transform, in there as well, just so I can relocate this clock right off to the side and the top there so it's out of the way. And that's going to give us a quick reference so I can see what's going on. And I'll start building out my actual countdown. So I'm going to need another one for the system times to pull out. So again, time, system time. Um, but I'm also going to want to set an input. So this is my current time, but I want to count down to a certain time. So I'm going to choose what I'm going to count down to. So I'm going to, uh, if I look at these, they come out as integers. So I want to try and stay in the same format. So integer input. And what this is going to do is register as an input in Resolume. So I can give it a name. If I double click in there, I'll call that hour. Uh, and I can give it a max value here. So I don't want to go above 24 for hours. And that means in Resolume, I'll have this nice little slider or input box and I can't go above 24. Same thing for minutes and seconds. Minute, but this time, uh, set my max value to 60 for both of those. All right. And so now I need to subtract uh, my countdown time from my current time to figure out what the remaining is. And rather than using hours, minutes, and seconds and trying to clamp and cycle through things, I'm just going to convert everything to seconds first and then convert back. And that's going to be a lot easier working in seconds as a large number and then converting it back from there. Uh, and it's very, very simple to convert to seconds. Um, we're just times it by 60. So I'll do it down here first. I'm taking out the, the hours, math, multiply. Um, left, right, multiplying by 60. And then I want to add this to the minutes because they're both minutes now. So I've now figured out what my minutes are for midnight, which is zero. Um, but if I drag out from here, get another math node, this time add, and I'm going to add my minutes in here, so I'll drag them in, and again, now I've got both those together, I'm going to multiply by 60 to get to my seconds, and I can now add that with the seconds. So look here, we're counting up 
with the seconds. And I'll be able to copy and paste this and use this exact setup exactly for my inputs here. So I'm taking my hours, uh, combining it with my minutes at the add node, and then combining it with my seconds at the second add node. And now if I drag this up, you can see that's changed. So one hour is 3,600 seconds and one minute is 60 seconds. So now I've got my two here and to figure it out, all I need to do is simply subtract from each other. Go math node, subtract. And let's have a counting to 6 a.m. You can see this is now counting down in seconds. All right, so I've got my countdown in seconds. I need to bring it back to hours, minutes, and seconds. So I need to separate them out again. So there's two ways of doing this. Um, I'll show you the long math way first, and then there is a little bit of a quick way, but I think it's nice knowing the, the math procedure first, uh, just to get your head around, and then I'll show you. If you want to jump ahead, I'll put a, a chapter marker in there. But um, I'll show you that afterwards. So I've got my full number here, and I need to break it down again. So I'm gonna take the math, and this time we're gonna divide. So divide by 60. And divide by 60 again. And that should be my hours. But it's giving us a flow value, so I need to put another function there just to Log off, I'll put a floor in, and that's gonna give me that whole number. So just give me the five hours. And now uh, I need to figure out what the minutes are remaining. And there's another math function for that um, called modulo. So if I look into math, modulo, if you look at the uh, divide by value and then output the remainder. So what it's actually doing is dividing and then telling you what's left over. So if I add a modulo in, so this time we're gonna divide by 60 again um, to get the hours, but now I figure out what's left over, which is what's left over in minutes. So 24 minutes. Same thing, I need a floor on that, so I'm not going over. And then finally, I want another modulo just for the seconds. So before we've even divided this one again. So there we go, 17 seconds. I don't need a floor, but I'm gonna put one in anyway, just so we're quite consistent with our nodes here. Four, let's be see a countdown, and we can down with the time one, zero. And that matched up with my clock up here. So everything looks like it's working right. So I've got till 6 a.m. I've got five hours, 23 minutes, and 43 seconds. Now I want to combine all these together. So like I did with my system clock up here, I'm going to use a couple of concatenate to link them all back in. So use two, I'm bringing my hours. You see it's not going to connect, so it wants a string. So what I can do is I can drag out and put in a string input and then it'll convert it for me. So I need a couple of these and just convert that integer into a string or a float into a string. So sometimes it won't let you take it straight in. Again, I'll put in my semicolon separator, bring these back in to the loop down and then add in my seconds. Again, I'll need to convert that into a string. And we don't want any decimal places, so I'll make decimal places zero. Put another separator. And now I'm gonna render this one to text as well. So a text renderer.
drop that one in there and bring that in layer one. And here we go, now we're counting down. So I set that to 1 a.m. I jump maybe 40 minutes and we'll count down. So a couple of things up there, if you look now, we're going to negative values and we don't ever want to count below. We want to get to zero and stop. So what I can add in is a clamp to make sure we never go below. So a clamp will lock us off to that value. So the max value we'll ever go to, say maybe or 60, they're never going to be able to go over, so I'll set them all to 60 anyway. And we'll just drop that in between each one. We'll stop at zero. So if I change these now, so we can't go below zero. Um, and looking just to make things pretty, uh, see that we've got, um, when we go below double digits, we end up with, we lose the zero. And I quite like having that zero just in front. So I'm going to add in a bit of uh, a variable, uh, sorry, a conditional to change that based on where we're at. So we want to add a zero in for anything that's um, single digits. And for that, we're going to use a greater than the logic. So uh, when I get my number from anywhere, as long as that number, if that number is greater than nine, it's going to give us a true value or a false value. So now I can use a, I can use a switch and a switch will take in a true or false value, so I can bring that in, and it'll switch between the cases based on that. Um, what I need to do is change the switch type to a uh, string, that way I can put in a semicolon or a semicolon with a zero. And now if I link this into the separator, you can see that if it's greater than zero, we don't have, sorry, greater than nine, we don't have that value. I'll just drag my seconds up a bit till we get down to uh, just above. And so now if we count down after 10, we get that switches over to false and we add in that zero. So we can do the same thing, copy these, add them in for my minutes as well. So when my minutes come in, as long as it's greater than nine, then it's gonna change my separator in here as well. So I drag my minutes till we go down. There we go, just under nine. And we get that zero in. <clears throat> and if we want to do the same thing for the hours, um, do the, put these all in line. Things kind of get messy very quickly. And we'll use another concatenate just so we can add in that separation. So I'll link this one to the left and then bring the hours in on the right, and then using the same clamp uh, switch and greater than, I'll link that in and bring that in as my separator value. And I won't need the semicolon, so just nothing and zero. And now we get the double zero in there. I really promise I'll tidy this up a little bit. I'll show you how I can get this just a little bit cleaner. So. There is another time node, um, just time. And what this will do is it will take our value. So if I go an hour value, maybe we're going till 10 a.m. now, and it'll take the seconds in and actually break it down instead of these uh, modulo divide functions. And instead I can just drag these straight in to those floor values. And you'll see nothing's changed. I've just simplified this little breakdown with this node here. So it's doing exactly the same thing, but I think it's worth knowing this in the meantime. Everything else is the same. We're 
breaking it down with a floor, so we're locking it down to the, the whole values. Clamping it to keep it at zero. So I'll just try and keep everything a bit tidier in here. So I'll save this now and use countdown. Um, compile it as well whilst I'm here. Resolute. I should have it. There it is. NYE countdown. And drop it straight in. So the clock running at the top already. Um, and down here, I can just change these values as I need. So countdown to 24 hours or five hours. And those are my input values now. So back in wire, uh, I can disconnect this. I don't need my uh, clock up there. Uh, I can change this text. We can make this bigger if we need to. Just the text scale here, we can change the font. If we'd like to change the color. Another thing we can do is um, say we wanted to say Happy New Year or whatever it is we're counting down to. So once we've finished the countdown, we get to zero and then we have a, another text change. So what we'd do is we'd add a switch in here as well. So add a new switch and we'd use the, we wanna know if this subtract, as long as it is above zero or greater than zero, we're still counting down. And once we're below zero, we've reached that number. So a greater than logic. Uh, so if this is greater than zero, true, we're doing case one. So we'll put that in the switch, case one. I'll move this all the way over. So the switch is actually gonna go all the way over here. So we gonna have another text renderer. This can be my happy new year text. This is my second condition. So my first condition is if it's true. Second condition is if it's false. And then this will go into my renderer. And so I lock off that view so I can pin that so it doesn't change when I click on other things. And now, once we've counted down, so I'll roll that real quick and happy new year. So I'll just give it maybe a write down. So we'll count down from 15. So we're counting down. And once we get down there, happy new year. And once the switch will stay in that um, until that's no longer true. If we wanted to add, we could be say less than minus one if we wanted to go just a bit over five. So we'll get, so we'll at least get to see that zero for a bit and then it'll switch over. So there's a very quick and simple uh, New Year's Eve countdown timer using Wire or Resolume. So I'll compile this out. I'll have this project available for download so you can take it and build it and make it your own. Uh, and if you want just the block, that'll be available as well. So enjoy.